Incoming tide, 64 degrees, 806, October 5th. TK has a little bit of a cold. Come on out, T-Rex. Come on out, Steve. We have what I used to call a slum goulash. Goulion. Goulash. A mixture of everything that's in the refrigerator. Put into a pan and made for dinner. That's what we have in the weather department today. Goulash. Something from everywhere. Leftovers of air coming from all at the same time. Russia, Hawaii, Africa, and Labrador. The reason for the fog this morning is the air that came in very subtly last night and late yesterday from Labrador, and that's in southeastern Canada. Uh, one of the clues is the reading this morning at 7 a.m. at the Isles of Shoals Weather Instruments, five miles east of Rye, New Hampshire. The air from 70 degrees, that's east-northeast, with the barometer 1024 millibars and rising. So we have a strengthening high pressure system to our northeast. And then off to our west and southwest, we have warm to record warm with a front coming at us from, well, part of it's from Russia and part of it's from Hawaii. And then way off in that direction <laughs> is a storm from Africa. Its name is Philippe. Philippe has defied all forecasts. I don't know how you did this, but you made this great a storm tracker from New York made this great graphic of Philippe's forecast direction over the last week and how it's changed so many times. And that means our forecast has changed that many times here in New England. Back on Sunday, Monday, when we're talking about a beautiful Wednesday, watch out, Saturday might not be so good. Then there was one, Heron. <laughs> Saturday might not be so good because there was a front coming in. The front was supposed to get here on Friday with showers and thunderstorms and close to record warmth. The question was, were we going to have a wave of low pressure developing on that front, on the warm side of the front over the mid-Atlantic states and coming up and really enhancing the rainfall here? And we said, yeah, it looks more likely on Tuesday. Uh, by Tuesday, it looked like, yeah, some heavy rain was likely here as opposed to just a front going by and clearing us out. And so that wave looked stronger and stronger. Now it's no longer a wave of low pressure uh, forming on the front. And now it's tropical storm Philippe, albeit weak, it's tropical. It's a cyclone. It's got a closed circulation and very warm and humid air. And now that is replaced that potential wave of low pressure that was going to develop. So now I want to point out tomorrow the three streams here. Uh, you see that front with uh, the rain changing to snow. Uh, you can't really see the rain changing to snow, but over the sort of Lake Superior, uh, there's that's the front from Alaska and Russia. And then in Ontario, connected all the way down to Mexico, that's the air coming from Hawaii and Mexico. And then down in the lower right, that is Philippe, air from Africa. And it's all gonna bash into this air from Labrador. So. When I go on the road speaking, I say, the name of my speech is going to be why New England has the most interesting weather on earth, or at least can match it. Because you have the air coming from the four points of the compass. And the next 48 hours, we're getting it from the uh, northwest, southwest, southeast, and northeast all at the same time. That's the goulash. And watch what it does here on the surface map Here's the front coming at us from the west and uh, a colder front to its northwest. And then from the southeast, here comes Philippe. Philippe kind of wobbling around out there. I'm going to slow this down so you can see the three different energy centers. You can't really see the fourth one from the high pressure in Labrador. Coming together right over New England, mostly in northern New England. Now Philippe farther west than any of the runs have had it brings the heaviest batch of rain across eastern Massachusetts, including Cape Cod, and then into Maine. And meanwhile, the rain with the 
front off to the west is heaviest now west of the Connecticut River. So that's a wholesale change from yesterday. You look at the QPF, you remember yesterday we showed six inches of potential rain near Old Lyme, Connecticut with hardly anything over Cape Cod. Well, the whole thing is jogged west now. So now Cape Cod's getting one to two inches. The main coast is getting five inches and around Old Lyme, Connecticut, less than a tenth as that heavier rain is now pushed to the west. We are not going to be able to resolve these bands of heavy rain until they set up over us Friday night and Saturday. That's when we're going to know who gets the heaviest rain. You know, you got to love those 10 day forecasts and everything that people do. We want to see them, but they're almost useless. And even in this case, our three day forecast was not very helpful. That's the wonder of New England weather. It is just so fascinating and so unpredictable. The best we can do is try and call the play by play, play, by play and suss it out. And incidentally, this fog, remember a few days before Lee, the same thing happened. And I remember this happening almost every time there's a threat for a tropical storm that's still a thousand miles away. We end up with this fog and then somehow it ends up missing. I still have uh, very little understanding of how that keeps on happening. But in this case today, it has to do with that high pressure system that came in over Labrador yesterday and cooling our atmosphere just enough to reach uh, the saturation point with the dew point and the temperature come together because we had warmer humid air coming from the south and then this cooler air came in and just uh, condensed all that vapor. And the west side of the Connecticut River, you don't have that fog this morning. And even Nantucket, where the air is still warm enough, you don't have any fog. So beautiful. Uh, at Stowe, Bill Levins declared today peak foliage day about four days ago because he said the weather coming in tonight and tomorrow uh, would probably cause wind and rain and start the, the downside of the foliage season. It's still going to be beautiful, but some leaves may start dropping and it's going to get very windy. Let's continue the saga of the merge of all these weather systems from all over the planet over New England. Uh, Philippe becomes a post-tropical storm. Now you have an icy mess happening in Quebec as this low deepens to 979. That's the goulash of low pressure systems. And it's strong wind from the west blowing through New England. And the colder air is actually pushed more south into Pennsylvania than it is into New England. Classic when these storms retrograde like that all the way back to near Lake Superior. And now it's starting to weaken. And now it comes back the other way and moves north of us back from west to east again as a weakening low pressure system that will bring back warmer air and brighter weather for a nice looking Wednesday and Thursday. Oh boy, did he just set us up? Yeah, another major system coming out of the Pacific Ocean. I think more North Pacific than South Pacific this time is going to roar across the country. Uh, so as fast as we cool off, warmer air is going to try and come back into the eastern United States and a battle royale could be setting up for us next weekend again with another sub 990 low. This one tracking to our south. That would be a powerful nor'easter if that holds. Just incredible trying to keep up with the variety of weather around here and the egrets. I wonder if any of those egrets did fly south. Come on, camera, focus. I'm touching my screen, but it won't focus. How about if I do that and then that and then that? So I had a blast yesterday uh, working around the yard, working with Jerry. Boy, does he move fast on his little tractor there. Good job, Jerry. And coming down here and making time lapse of uh, the ships and boats that were going by. The Glenda Melissa <laughs> uh, flagged in Iberia, Liberia, <laughs> but uh, registered in Liberia, but there was an American flag on the back of it. Got a time lapse of that for you, Jeff. Has been requesting more time lapse of tankers. It's a 600 foot tanker uh, that went by yesterday. And right as we're talking right now, the sun is coming back out. That fog right there is moving from right to left. That's from southwest to the northeast but the air right down near the ground, right where I'm standing. Yeah, it feels a little bit southwest too. So the boats are also pointed to the southwest. Uh, there's a light breeze from the southwest running into that light breeze from the east over the Isle, Isles of Shoals. And that's the reason for this fog, but the sun is gonna 
burn this fog off and we're going to end up with a pretty nice day with warm to record warm air away from the coast in western New England before all that real heavy weather comes in tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. Sunday is just going to be windy. Showers in the mountains may turn to snow. Not too confident on that. And just a word or two about the Montauk Daisy. Again, I pruned that side on July 4th and I pruned that side late in July. So we're going to have two different blooms of the Montauks. And I'm just leaving those tomatoes there for show. Okay, and the roses are just showing off. I think 10 minutes and 33 seconds is enough before the end more. Well, I didn't even get to this one last fact that Taiwan Typhoon had a wind gust to 213 miles an hour up on a thousand foot elevation volcano. The old record for the windiest spot on earth was 212 miles an hour on Mount Washington close to a century ago. And there've been a couple of other readings that strong, but that could be the one of the top wind gusts ever recorded on the planet, that the typhoon into Taiwan. Later. I saw the school of fish just in front of you, right when you got there, they just disappeared. So fun watching the birds and you, Andrew. Uh, by the way, the fish just moved over there. <laughs> we're just where you just were, bummer. No watering. No fertilizer. Lush! That's how we describe our lawns this fall. go. Big boys with big toys. Every day. Work is play. Play is work. Right, Jerry? We're having fun. Gorgeous. Wednesday, October 4th. Burning bushes are starting to burn. Who needs a break? The mower or the operator? Me. <laughs> Nice job. You made that look really fast. Wait till you see how fast you went. <laughs> oh my God. That's gorgeous. Uh, so as lawns go, you've been mowing lawns for a couple of decades. Oh yeah. Seen as much thick grass in October before? Not really. You, you know, you've got a point. It really is something, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens with us. We'd be so bored if we weren't allowed to mow the grass every couple of days. Oh my God, for sure. God bless you. Alon with a view. Many hands and paws make the work a load lighter. Hi, Gracie. Hi. Is it sweater season already? Well, it was a couple days ago, and it will be again. Fresh from the emergency alert test, back to our regularly scheduled and more by popular demand, Steve and Boats. Everyone loves the boats. So that's three and a half times zoom. Whoops, where's the boat? It's our boat there. Jeff, the tanker is for you. Three and a half times zoom. 6.3 zoom. Nine zoom. I think that's the most zoom I have. So let's just lock this in place. Red, right, return. T-Rex. The hull gut right there. I'll put the hull gut right in it. And I'm gonna just take and make a video and then I'm gonna fast forward the video. So I can focus out more distance with the video than I can with the time lapse feature on the iPhone. Straighten this out a little. Alright, I'm just gonna let it go now. Four o'clock, mid seventies, warm enough that Steve has chose to lay down in the shade. You can tell how far the sun got into the backyard by this line. 
That's where the dew from last night did not evaporate today. So Linda, I hear you about the low sun and dew lasting into the afternoon. If the sun doesn't come out where you are, the dew does not evaporate at all. Should be another dewy night with a clear sky, high barometer.